Hey everyone, my name is Naveed, and in this video, I'm going to be showing you how to create a model for your Rails application. So at this point, we have primarily worked with controllers and views, and now I'm going to introduce you to the backend. If we go over to our text editor in our Rails application, we see a folder called DB, and everything in this folder is related to our database. Let's go over to the command line, and first we're going to run git status to make sure that we're working on a clean tree. Then I can clear the command line and I'm going to run a rails generator. I will run rails g model and then provide the name of the model. In this case, it's going to be category. And then I want to give an attribute called name. So this generator will create a model in my rails application called category with a single attribute called name which defaults to a string. So let's press enter and see what happens. Now in the command line, we see that a few files got created. Let's go over to app and under models, we can see our category.rb file, which defines our category model. Let's close out of here. And then we wanna go over to database. And now we have this new folder called migrate. Let's open up our migrations and check out our first migration that we created. Okay, so this Rails migration file allows us to define and build out our Postgres database. And in this example, we are creating a table called categories with a single attribute name. Now, before I run my migration, I want to make a few modifications to this file. Let's go over to our web browser and Go ahead and visit guides.rubyonrails.org and under guides index, look for a link to active record migrations. All right, once you're at this page, we can go ahead and select writing a migration. And if we look here, we can see that we can actually put some restrictions on this attribute. So let's copy this snippet right here and go back to our text editor. And I'm going to paste that right next to my attribute. And what this is saying is that I don't want to save any values that are empty. So if I try to create a category without a name, well, that record is not going to save to my database. Another thing that I can do is make the record unique. And this unique flag will prevent any duplicate categories from being persisted to my database. Once you've modified this migration file, go over to your command line and run rails db colon migrate. Awesome. So once the migration is complete, you'll see a new file called schema.rb. And this is just showing us how we have built out this schema for our Postgres database. And as we create more migrations, this schema.rb file will continuously be modified and built out. Let's go ahead and close out of schema.rb and we can also close out of this migration file. Now what I wanna do is go over to my command line and we can clear the command line and I'm going to pull this up a little bit. And what I wanna do is run Rails console. So Rails console gives us an interactive way to engage with our backend using Ruby. So now that we have created our model, I can run category dot all. And notice that I'm getting just an empty array. Now I want to create a new category. And to do that from the Rails console, I can type in category dot create. And then in parentheses and quotes, I can add the name of my category. In this case, let's just say sports. So it looks like I have to pass in a hash. So notice that I didn't provide the actual name of the attribute. So I have to do name colon sports. And let's remove this extra parentheses. Okay, that's a little bit better. Now when we press enter, we're going to create a new category. So now if I run category.all, you're going to see 
this category record with ID of one and with a name of sports. Let's create one more category and we can call that category. We'll say politics. Okay, so now we have two categories that are persisted. And if I run category.all, we can see that we have one category with ID one and name sports and another category with ID two and name politics. Now we are able to create records in our database and we are able to query our database. I can run category.all.first to get the first record, or I could do category.all.last to get the last record. Okay, so at this point, what I want to do is actually display these categories in my Rails application. So to do that, I'm going to exit the Rails console and then clear my command line. So notice I just typed exit to get out of the Rails console. Okay, so when I'm back at the command line, I'm going to run my Rails application. And let's open up Google Chrome and we can visit localhost 3000. So here's my application running. And what I wanna do is list or display my categories on this home page. So in my Rails application, I can go over to app, controllers, and to my main controller under this home action, I'm going to add a line that says categories equals, and actually I'm gonna make this lowercase, equals category singular dot all. So Rails follows a singular and plural convention. And notice that we have multiple categories because we wanna list all of the categories. But when I actually wanna qu query the database, I use the singular. Okay, so once we've defined our categories, let's go over to our views and under main home, I'm going to list these categories. So I'm going to open up an embedded Ruby block. And what I'm going to do is type at categories dot each do two pipes. And then you're going to write categories, category singular, because we want to display each record. So now I can type in category dot name. And above that, I'm going to type category dot ID. And then I'm going to put just a line under here so you can see them separate. And once we save this file and go back over to our web browser and refresh, notice that I have my categories listed. Now, sometimes by accident, you might put an equal sign and that will just put the actual object in the DOM. So let's go over and just remove this equal sign here and that will get rid of that. And then lastly, I'm going to put this in a fluid container as well. And now we refresh and we have a good alignment and we're listing our categories. Awesome. Now above here, I'm just going to write categories and that looks pretty good. Now, before we sign off, there's one last thing I want to show you, and that's how to seed data to your database. Let's open up a new session in our terminal, and I'm going to open up Rails console. And notice that if I run category.all, I get all of my categories back, but when I want to seed data, well, I really want my database to be empty. 
So the first thing that I'm going to do is I'm going to go back to my command line and let's just kill the Rails application for now by typing in control C. So clear the command line and what I'm going to do is type in rails db colon rollback. And what that's going to do is roll my database back. So when I go back to my rails application, let's make sure that we have it running. So open up a new shell and run dot forward slash bin forward slash dev. Let's refresh and notice that we have this error. We have a pending migration. So let's go back over to our command line and run rails db migrate after we ran rails db rollback. And we're just going to migrate our database again and create that categories table. So if we go back and refresh, notice that categories are here, but there are no records. And if we go to our rails console and run category.all, we have an empty array again. Okay, so that's where we want to be. Now let's go over to database and under seeds, we can kind of look here at the documentation that was left and notice that there's this nice line right here that we can just use for ourselves. So we're going to say category doc create, we're going to say sports, and then we can create multiple categories. So we can say sports, politics, local, national, and global. All right, let's press save and then go back to our command line and then run rails db colon seed. Okay, now let's go back and refresh. And now we see all of our categories that got seeded into our database. Awesome. Let's clear the command line. And at this point, we're ready to push our code up to GitHub. I can run git add, git commit, and I can type in created a category model. Let's type in git push, clear the command line, and I will see you in the next lesson.